so and then following that uh, we're gonna get into line configuration and got slides on each of these um, line configurations used to secure console access auxiliary access telnet and SSH access <coughs> so securing console access um, command structure follows up top <coughs> from global configuration mode line space console space zero jumps you into line configuration mode for the console port um, you need to set up a, a username and password so uh, well you actually don't need a username you just need a password technically uh, so login command enables that and then following that uh, the command is going to be password space and then whatever you want your password to be um, instead of setting a specific password to the console port you can have it use the local password with the command uh, login space local so like I just set the uh, the username and password on this router to, to admin in Cisco um, if I put the login local command for this uh, line console zero that's also going to be the credentials that it, it wants for um, for uh, the, the, the console port instead of just the device itself um, and then also you can um, I actually kind of prefer this. Um, it, it keeps you from having to remember 17 different passwords for a single router. But um, the timeout for the sessions can also be modified. Um, so timeout, you know, after inactivity for any particular console session, the default is 10 minutes. Um, for some admins, they may not be comfortable with it being quite that uh, quite that long. So you can uh, lower that or increase it if you want. Um, in this case, I'm going to set it to a minute and 30 seconds. Command is again from line configuration mode exec dash timeout space one space 30. First value is minutes, second value is seconds. So I'll go ahead and pull up line con here. So line console zero. See me jumps me into line configuration mode. I will uh, set it to login local. And I'm going to set an exec. Timeout of uh, let's say five minutes forty five seconds, and that's that's it. Since I'm doing login local, I'm not um, setting a specific password. And make sure I exit out of there as well. So moving on from console access, we have auxiliary access, which command structure is nearly identical. In fact, quite identical outside of the name of the actual line. In this case, so line console zero, we've got line auxiliary zero. So, um, you know, you can do either the login local or the login in a separate password command. And then again, you can also change your executive, your uh, exec timeout uh, to lower than 10 minutes. So, I'll jump back over to here. Line aux zero. Login local. And I'll set an exec timeout of 7 minutes. And then uh, beyond auxiliary access, you also have your uh, Telnet and SSH access. I, I mentioned before that if we had IP connectivity, we would have uh, SSH full enabled. That wasn't actually accurate. Uh, we need to have the, the VTY line set up, uh, VTY standing for virtual terminal, um, set up as well so that we could uh, SSH in even if we had IP connectivity. Command structure, again, very similar to uh, console and auxiliary. The only difference is your VTY, and in this case, uh, you'll notice instead of a single number, we have two numbers uh, with a separate uh, you know, space in between. That's the uh, the actual session number, so you know you can have up to five. Um, you can lower this if you want, but you know doing zero through four is standard. Um, so line space VTY space zero space four means you've got session zero, session one, session two, session three, and session four available. So up to five individuals can have. Uh, Telnet sessions into that uh, that particular router at one time before it starts denying sessions, and then uh, command structure um, is exactly the same as we we just did on the other line. So jump over to there. Um, line VTY zero space four, and I'm going to set a look at uh, look in uh, log a look in again. And I'll go ahead and change the exact timeout um, on that to 4 minutes 30 seconds. Just picking random numbers out of the air. It's probably a good idea to keep these like fairly standard throughout your network, and might even be a good idea to keep those times fairly standard on different things. Like obviously they'd have different levels of um, you know 
impact on security, but I want to keep it fairly standard just to keep it less confusing. So that is uh, all of your line configurations. And then beyond that, we, uh, we move into our router interface configuration. So this includes assigning an IP address, um, enabling an interface, LAN specific commands, WAN specific commands, and then saving your configuration. So starting off with assigning an IP address, um, pretty straightforward um, from global configuration mode, interface, space, and then the interface name and number you're trying to get into. And you'll notice after that it changes you to interface configuration mode, config-if. And the command is IP space address space, uh, the IP address space, the subnet mask. So on, um, on this particular router, it's not going to let me do it quite like that because if I, uh, if I look at um, my actual interfaces, um, I'm not on this particular router, it's a Cisco 871, you're not going to have the same higher level functionality you will on like a you know, 3000 series or 7000 series router obviously. Um, I'm not actually going to be able to assign address on these individual Ethernet uh, interfaces because they're all tying to this um, this virtual VLAN one, a logical interface. But I will be able to assign an, inter uh, an IP address to that. So um, oh, I'm already on in config T mode. Um, so you know, interface VLAN one, and I'm going to set the IP address to 192.168.1.1 255.0 subnet mask. And um, normally I would have to uh, do a no shut on a, on a physical port. Um, I don't have to do that on a on this logical port. It's already going to be no shut, but I'll show you the command anyway. It's no shut or no shut down. And no impact, obviously, because it's a, it's a logical interface and it hasn't been shut previously. I can shut it and it, it, will, um, it will shut completely. But... Um, Shut down. Yeah, see, there, there it goes finally. Took a second. Uh, no shutdown. We'll see the uh, terminal message noting that it's back up. Uh, so that's the that's the interface or for configuring the IP address, and then uh, just went over enabling the interface. Just the simple no shut from interface configuration mode. Um, and then uh, LAN specific commands. Um, this really only goes over speed and duplex. On fast Ethernet interfaces, um, you have the option of 10 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second. You also have the options of full or half duplex. Uh, duplex basically, you know, full duplex you're able to send and receive at the same time. Half duplex you're only able to send or receive one at a time, um, not not both simultaneously. Um, a lot of times these are set to auto negotiate with whatever the device is behind it, but if um, for whatever reason that's not set correctly or we just uh, would feel more comfortable with the static configuration, we can um, statically set these. So, again, on this, I'm not going to really be able to do that. I mean, I can go into um, like Fast Ethernet 4 because that's actually a WAN interface for this box. So, let me exit out of VLAN 1, interface FA4. Just me into there. Um, speed 100. Duplex. And then if you look in here, it'll be you know auto full or half. It's all already going to be auto. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set it to full. Actually, let's see what it shows for speed. You should just have 10, 100. Okay, yeah, and then auto, I guess. So naturally, these are both set to auto, but we've you know statically set these. Good. Set an IP address on the WAN interface as well. Say ten dot ten dot ten dot two. All right. So that's uh, LAN specific. WAN specific. Um, won't actually be able to do the, this on this particular uh, piece of equipment, but. Um, for serial interfaces, you'll need to set your uh, your clock rate and bandwidth. Commands for those are pretty straightforward. Uh, again, from global configuration mode, jump into your interface configuration, interface space serial space zero zero. Uh, clock space rate space 64000, and then bandwidth space 64. I uh, will set this for 64 kilobits per second. So that's your, your WAN specific stuff.